Well, hello everybody. So, more or less this is an extra class because I could not complete or rather I, I felt that uh, you need to know a little more about um, the analytical models in order to get a complete idea regarding your two phase flow in micro channels both for adiabatic as well as flow boiling conditions. So, in this particular class we are going to deal with flow pattern based systems. Now, here I would like to mention that I had already uh, rather we had already discussed the homogeneous flow model in my last few lectures right. For the what does the homogeneous flow model assume? It assumes that the two phases they are flowing with the same velocity and there is no slip while they are flowing through the conduit which automatically implies that the inlet and the in situ compositions are the same. Now, this is quite a drastic assumption because whenever two phases are flowing they have they will interact at the interface and the lighter phase will automatically try to slip past the heavier one. So, therefore, there is going to be a relative motion between the phases. Based on this particular concept the a very simple, but popular flow pattern based model is the drift flux model which assumes the drift between the phases. Now, in order to understand the drift flux model, we would first like to define what a drift flux is. Now, if we remember in the nomenclatures, we had defined something like the volumetric flux, which is nothing but we define the volumetric flow rate per unit area, it is usually defined as J for single phase flows. So, in two phase flows we should have a J 1, we should have a J 2, where J 1 equals to Q 1 by A and J 2 equals to Q 2 by A. Now, at this juncture a very common question which I face while I teach drift flux model in my classes that the mathematical expression of J 1 is the same as the superficial velocity which I had talked about. In the superficial velocity also I had said the velocity which the fluid would have had it flowed alone in the pipe. So, mathematically we find that this has a similar expression as u 1 s and this has a similar expression as u 2 s. But let me tell you these equalities are applicable only for one dimensional flows right, which we will be seeing shortly. When there is a temporal variation or there is a spatial variation of velocity under that condition your j 1 and j 2 they vary across the cross section, but u 1 s and u 2 s are the inlet velocities they remain constant. So, for so suppose it happens that your volumetric flux it is varying along the cross section there is a radial variation of velocity in that case we find q 1 is given by integral j 1 d a, q 2 is given by integral j 2 d a ok. And then under this condition this j 1 cannot be equated to the superficial velocity. So, remember one thing since we are dealing with one dimensional flows the mathematical expression to find out volumetric flux and superficial velocity are the same, but this is just because we are dealing with one dimensional flows under when there is a temporal or a radial variation then generally they will not be the same. That is why we have defined volumetric fluxes although earlier I had also defined superficial velocity. Now, before I proceed I would like to clarify one more point which I should have done while we were discussing the experimental results where I had tried to predict your uh, pressure gradient as a function of your uh, say superficial velocity of phase 2 with phase 1 as a parameter. So, in that particular thing I forgot to clarify that when we are dealing with micro channels the superficial velocities do not usually correspond to the inlet velocities like two phase flow in macro channels. In two phase flow in macro channels what we find is the superficial velocity of the fluids are nothing but the inlet velocities. 
because the pressure variation during flow is not very drastic. So, we assume that there is the density change and the specific volume change is not very large when they are flowing through the pipe and therefore, the inlet and superficial velocities are the same. This is not the case for micro channel flow. Here as the pressure varies, so therefore, the velocity also keeps on changing even when a single phase is flowing through a micro channel. So, in this particular case when I talk of superficial velocity, it means the velocity which the fluid would occupy had it flowed alone in the cross section in the viewing window where we are taking or in the measurement section where we are taking the measurements. The superficial velocity does not refer to the inlet condition, it refers to the test window for the measurements are being taken. So, therefore, how to find out the superficial velocity in this particular case? We know the inlet velocity, we can find out the outlet velocity, we know the inlet pressure, we can find out the outlet pressure. We assume that the pressure varies linearly across the entire test channel. So, accordingly we can find out the pressure in the measurement window, based on that particular pressure we try to find out the superficial velocity of the gas phase. So, corresponding to that pressure we find out the volumetric flow rate of the gas phase and that volumetric flow rate divided by the micro channel cross sectional area gives us this relevant superficial velocity which should be used in the models and also for predicting the flow pattern maps. When the pressure drop is not very significant during flow, then the inlet and the superficial velocities can be taken to be equal. So, this was one point which I forgot to mention in the file I was discussing the experimental results on void fraction and pressure drop and you need to keep this in mind. Well, now coming back to the drift flux model. So, therefore, what we did? We had defined the volumetric fluxes. And there is one other term which is rather which is uh, which should be defined when we are defined uh, rather for developing this particular model and that term is defined as J21 which is known as the drift flux of phase 2 relative to rather it, it, it is a drift flux of phase 2 relative to a surface moving at average velocity. So, therefore, suppose we assume that the surface is moving at an average velocity. So, therefore, in that case the drift of phase 2 relative to that surface is known as drift flux or it is better defined as it physically represents the volumetric rate at which vapor slips past through unit area of a plane normal to channel axis already travelling at velocity j. So, what does it mean basically? It means that the volumetric su suppose say the uh, the we consider the vapor phase, we find to try to find out the drift flux of the vapor phase. So, therefore, it represents the volumetric rate at which this particular vapor is passing forward in upflow or it is flowing backward in downflow through unit area of one particular plane which is perpendicular to the cross section and this particular velocity or the volumetric rate is with respect to the velocity of a of the channel axis. So, this channel axis is also travelling with an average velocity. What is the average velocity at which the channel axis is travelling? It is nothing but equal to JTP. 
the two phase volumetric flux which is equal to J 1 plus J 2. So, relative to this to, to this particular J T P the volumetric rate at which the vapor slips past. So, accordingly this definition is given as this is the volumetric rate of flow minus the or, or relative to the velocity of the center of the channel which is traveling at this particular velocity. So, accordingly the J 2 1 is defined here and once this J 2 1 is defined next. <coughs> so, therefore, what do we get? We get that J 2 1 this is nothing but this is equal to u 2 minus J T p. What is u 2 equals to in terms of J 2? This is equal to J 2 by alpha minus J T p. So, therefore, th this is nothing but J 2 minus alpha into J T p. So, therefore, from here what is the expression of alpha you tell me? This should be equal to J 2 minus J 2 1 divided by J T p or in other words what is J 2 equals to this is alpha J T p plus J 2 1 right. So, therefore, from here what do you get? What was the alpha from the homogeneous value? I had already mentioned that alpha equals to beta which is nothing but equal to J 2 by J T p right. Now, when we consider the drift flux we find that alpha drift flux it is the homogeneous alpha into some particular correction factor which accounts or, that or rather it is the correction factor where it uh, the factor by which alpha h has to be corrected. So, that the we get the actual value of the void fraction when drift flux is accounted for right. So, therefore, what the drift flux basically does it corrects the uh, homogeneous void fraction data so, uh, by taking into account the drift flux model. And accordingly since it corrects the, the uh, alpha accordingly it can correct other terms for example, it can correct the mixture velocity the mixture with the, this is the homogeneous value mixture velocity and this the correction term which has been incorporated right. So, therefore, we find that for each and every term you can also correct the momentum flux for each and every term we find that we are correcting the homogeneous value with the correction term which is a function of J 2 1 versus J 2 or J 2 1 versus J T p depending upon the condition. But correction factor corrects the homogeneous value by considering the drift flux. Now, <coughs> this was fine as far as the as far as we consider the one dimensional flow ok. In one dimensional flow we assume that there is no cross sectional variation then it is fine. But if there is a cross sectional variation then naturally we need to consider the cross sectional averaged values. What is the cross sectional average value for this case? This as we know from our fluid mechanics this can be given by a term of this sort. Same thing for this term also the correction factor should be this right and again for J 2 1 also the correction factor it should be integral j 2 1 d a by integral d a fine. So, therefore, if there is a there is a variation across the cross section then this particular equation it should be written down in terms of proper average values and then what do we get at a, as a result of that the expression should be something of this sort right and <coughs> In this expression if you observe we find that this is an average of alpha and J T p. So, in order to find out a correct average what we need to do we need for each and every point in the cross section we need to find out alpha we need to find out J T p we need to multiply them and then we need to we, we need to find out the total integration of this particular term over the area averaged gives you this term. Now, we all understand that this is not at all a very easy thing. 
on the other hand finding out the voidage profile and the velocity profile is going to be much easy. So, therefore, what we do we replace this term with the term rather we introduce a correction term C 0 which can be defined as So, uh, what we do instead of alpha j t p average, we replace it with c 0 into alpha and j t p average. As a result of which the expression becomes c 0 alpha j t p plus j 2 1 right. And I would like to tell you that such type of correction factors are not new to you. You have come across such correction factors when we were dealing with single phase flow as well. If you recollect, you will find that in the same way we had defined the kinetic energy correction term in Bernoulli's equation and which was termed as alpha and we had also we had you, had you must have come across a momentum flux correction term. Okay. So, for those cases also if you remember we had introduced the correction terms why because in Bernoulli's equation what we had we had a u square term and this particular u square term again I would like to say that if it is averaged over the entire cross section then it would it then actually what we would have to do we would have to measure velocity at each and every point square the velocity find out the di distribution of the squared velocity and then find out a proper average. Instead of that if we can know the velocity profile and if we can find out the velocity profile which is a much easier thing to do and we can square it up then it is going to be easier. So, therefore, we had defined the alpha the kinetic energy correction term as u square by u square if you recollect. In the same way using the same particular tone we had defined the distribution parameter in this particular case. So, therefore, this is not a very new thing that we have done we have already done we have you have already come across such exercises in your single phase flows and they are always done in order to convert the the average of products into product of averages because it is easier to find this than to find this. Same thing was, was true for the case of kinetic energy correction term, same thing was also true for momentum energy correction term. So, from there what we do we, we express this particular term as which I have already written it down we express this particular term as C 0 into alpha into J T p plus J 2 1. So, from this particular expression how do we get alpha then? So, from this particular expression we find that alpha it can be obtained as j 2 minus j 2 1 divided by c 0 into j t p is not it. Now, j t p is a known term it is nothing but q 1 plus q 2 by a j 2 is a known term it is q 2 by a and j 2 1 is the relative or uh, the drift flux of phase 2 with respect to phase 1. So, if you would like to write this down in terms of volumetric flow rates then we find it is already written down here if you observe this particular equation it is q 2 minus a j 2 1 by c 0 into q 1 plus q 2. So, therefore, using this particular expression if we can find out j 2 1 and if we can find out c 0 then we can find out the corrected alpha and this corrected alpha is going to give us a corrected version of all the different or rather all the other average properties of the two phase mixture. And we find that j 2 1 and c 0 they are actually functions of the different flow patterns and we have different values of j 2 1 and c 0 for the bubbly slug etcetera and, and accordingly this drift flux model it takes into account the variation due to different flow patterns right. Now, when we have come to the micro channels we find that for most of the cases j 2 1 is negligible why because 
a little more detailed will will tell you that there is in this particular case there is negligible slip between the phases or in other words j21 it is nothing but as i have told you this j21 is nothing but alpha into u2 minus j for j equals to 0 j21 should be equal to your alpha into u2 but we find that for j equals to 0 the droplet of the bubble that has to travel due to buoyancy at some particular velocity and we find that for micro channels bubbles and slugs and drops they do not travel because the buoyancy is negligible in this particular case surface tension is dominating. So, therefore, when there is no flow of the liquid phase the gas phase does not propagate due to buoyancy. As a result for most of the cases of multiphase flow systems we find that J21 is equal to 0 and alpha can be given in the form of Q2 by Q1 plus Q2 which tells you that this particular term this is nothing but equal to beta. So, from this expression if we drop the averaging assuming that we are dealing with average things we find that C0 equals to, uh, alpha equals to 1 by C0 beta or in other words this is this explains why the Arman type correlation is applicable for micro channels of not very small dimension. This is because it obeys the drift flux model and the relative velocity is, is 0. So, therefore, we find that the drift flux model reduces to a Arman type correlation with 1 by C0 equals to the Arman constant k. Right. So, therefore, if we use the uh, use this particular expression for micro channels the or only cha challenge is to find out C0. Now, we find that for macro systems a large number of correlations have been suggested because this particular model is very popular for analyzing the bubbly and the slug flow patterns. So, therefore, for macro channels a wide range of C0 have been proposed and we find that for most of the cases the C0 it is greater than 1, it is around 1.2 for most of the cases which suggests that there is some particular the, the velocity and voided profile are not flat, there is some particular uh, or rather that there, there is some sort of a core peaking tendency in these cases and that is expected because when we are dealing with gas liquid flows or vapor liquid flows the gas or the vapor it flows at a faster velocity relative to the liquid and so naturally it will tend to be concentrated towards the center line for the velocity of the phase is the maximum and so naturally this tends to peak up the velocity and voidage profile and therefore the C0 is always greater than 1 for macro systems. Now when we go for the small tube correlations we find that in this case the the small tube or rather for small tubes again I think this has been done by Mishima and Hibiki. In this particular case the C0 for the larger channel it has been modified by one particular additional term where this term is a is a function of the hydraulic diameter of the pipe and this expression shows that C0 decreases with decrease in hydraulic diameter and it automatically implies a lower alpha at a lower hydraulic diameter. So, therefore, from here it is very evident that if C0 it decreases with hydraulic diameter. So, what does it imply? It implies that when C0 is, is lower, so naturally alpha becomes your alpha versus beta or rather the k it becomes higher is not it. And so, this implies that a lower alpha at a lower dh and th this is definitely consistent with experimental results which has been as e which is the same for circular as well as rectangular conduits. And this particular thing that uh, your C0 it is lower at a lower dh this can be attributed to two factors. Well, what are the two factors? The first thing is that naturally it there is a centralized void profile and therefore, the voids would like to flow through the central region 
and the other thing is since there is laminar flow in the narrow channels. So, naturally this also gives us a lower alpha at a lower dh right and just as I, I, I was mentioning the other part uh, on the uh, other day what happens for a lower hydraulic diameter the gas it tends to flow through the central portion number one and number two because it is laminar flow. So, therefore, your alpha tends to be lower at lower dh and this is what we have also obtained from our experimental results. So, there is one more thing which I would like to tell you that for most of the cases that we have dealt so far we have find that more or less T 0 it is greater than 1 which suggests that usually we have a concave profile. Now, there are several cases particularly in heated channels where the void profile actually changes from concave to concave convex or in other words instead of having a void profile something of this sort there are cases where we can have a void profile something of this sort. When does when do we have it? We have it when there is wall nucleation and after nucleation the, the bubbles they, they are there or rather they stick to the wall till they grow to a sufficient size and till they, they migrate towards the center. So, therefore, for, for the cases of for boiling two phase flow this is the case which happens this is particularly true for subcooled boiling regime and this can also happen for adiabatic flow at low void fraction when small bubbles tend to accumulate near the wall. A similar situation can also occur when we inject gas into a flowing liquid through a porous tube wall. Okay. For these cases we can have a rather a convex instead of a concave profile and under these conditions we actually get a C 0 which is less than 1. So, with this I complete the drip flux model and in the next class we will be shifting to the or rather we will be taking up one particular typical model for the slug flow pattern just because slug flow is so very common and we encounter slug flow. So, I would like to discuss a, the, a typical model developed on the basis of drip flux for the slug flow pattern. The usual approach for doing this in macro systems is to consider a unit cell approach where each unit cell comprises of a gas plug and its adjoining liquid slug. The analysis is done for one particular slug unit and it is assumed that the, this the, the pressure drop which has been predicted for one slug unit when multiplied by the number of slug units available in the flow passage is going to give us an idea regarding the void fraction or rather the pressure drop over the entire tube. So, in the next class we discuss the, the slug flow pattern based model in the case of microchannels. Thank you very much.